Holy sticky super snack, Batman. It's honey time, everyone. Yes, just like how I only figured out about us not having covered cactus but two weeks ago, I have somehow, some way, not covered honey for Pete's sake. I mean, seriously. It is arguably still the reigning superfood of Don't Starve Together, even after all these years. And it leads to some of the best healers, foodies, and baits around. So let's get sticky. And yes, to do so will be requiring plenty of talk about bees, folks. However, today's video is not a bee guide, so keep that in mind. But regardless, we will still be needing to know where our sources of honey even are. And for the most part, our best bet is, of course, the grasslands. Sure, a beehive may pop up in the mosaic on occasion due to its hodgepodge of turf. However, our grassland biomes are absolutely the way to go. As not only will there be plenty of beehives, but where there are hives, there are bees. And bees themselves can drop honey, everyone. Now, they're not the greatest at doing so, with their 16.7% chance drop rate. However, we still can't take advantage of this if we play smart. For you see, even killer bees drop honey at a similar rate, and killer bees respawn in but 20 seconds via their killer bee hives. So, if we keep the hives alive, you see where this is going. But, not only can killer beehives hold up the six bees total, there is a pretty good chance at generating a killer bee field per world, which could be a honey jackpot for us. Fair warning though, it's dangerous to go alone. So, bring a friend. A big one at that. Walking a giant like deer clops into a killer bee field is our ticket to stingers, honey, and honeycomb galore. Because, yes, beehives themselves drop three honey and a honeycomb each, be them killer or not. And yes, a Wendy slash Abigail combo could just as easily clear a field. But let's say you're alone. What then? Well, and this applies to more than just killer bee fields. If you know you're going up against lots of bees in search of honey, then it is advised you gear up with some beekeeper hats from under the dress tab. For you see, beekeeper hats reduce the damage taken by bees by 80%. So if you just plop on another set of armor, you should be A-OK -okay to take on quite a few stings. That said, if you can manage it, get a Wormwood player to make Bramble suits for you, and then go for it. As a Bramble suit is going to absolutely destroy swarms of bees with ease. Ah, but I don't have a killer bee field. I don't have a giant on hand. I'm not Wendy, and I'm not Wormwood. So what now? Well, fine. Do it yourself. Normal beehives also house six bees each, but those bees leave one at a time every 50 seconds. So if you wait until the majority of them are out to then hit the hive, you should be able to break it before too many surround you. Then again, kiting bees is pretty darn simple with a one hit and run pattern over and over and over again, so there's that. But all this to say that bees and beehives are our natural honey sources, folks, and they're both abundant, so take advantage of them. Oh, and I don't do this often, but it is hard not to do so today here. A pro strat for destroying beehives without having to fight the bees is use of fire and ice. Or, you know, at least anything that can suppress fire, that is. For you see, when a hive is set ablaze by anything, mind you, it forces the bees out, and they will not be angry. So this allows us to smash their hives threat-free and just run. Neat stuff. But yes, time to move on to the best source of honey around, ourselves. Or, you know, ourselves when we make bee boxes, that is. So hopefully you've been saving all them honeycombs along the way, because while beehives are not renewable, we can just, essentially, make our own better versions here. Oh, and be sure to craft a bug net to actually be capturing some live bees for these crafts. But that's not all. While it is true that bee boxes will produce one honey per day, even if there are no flowers around and we are far away, honey production is truly only as good as we make it. And we make it good via butterflies, mind you. Captured butterflies via bug net can actually be planted into flowers, and we must use this mechanic to make our bee boxes as efficient as possible. 
For you see, a bee from a box must reach at least six flowers in order for it to return to its box and up the honey count by one. And if it doesn't, it has to repeat the process each and every morning until it does. Therefore, more flowers means better chances at that, which means better honey production. And each box holds six honey potentially. And yes, while the bees won't leave home during winter, the one honey a day mechanic still applies. So really, once you set up a honey farm, it can just be utilized each and every day, all year round. And it's pretty sweet and insanely efficient if done properly, but don't overthink things either. It's not as involved as it sounds or looks. And when it comes to harvesting the honey then, it's best to just do so with as many bees out working as possible. Otherwise, just be ready to run around, waiting for them to de-aggro quickly, or just be far enough away for you to harvest another box. So have fun. Ah, but yet another pro strat before we leave. Use Fire Deer Advantage again, if you wish, as the same rules apply to bee boxes as they do to bee hives. Enjoy. But before we get to why honey is so dang good beyond its high availability, two last notes here. Yes, both hammering the gigantic beehive and defeating the bee queen within it can result in honey drops. But no, I wouldn't exactly recommend either, as the former drops but one, with the latter dropping three to four. That said, technically, the gigantic hive is an unlimited source of honey if you work for it. However, it can only produce honey every two minutes, mind you. And lastly, be mindful of honey-related foods within your inventory when around Berger. Why? Because he wants it. He will aggro on you, however, he isn't exactly mad. He's just hungry. So drop your honey foods, and he'll just calm himself right down. So good luck. But yes, it's time to talk the yellow goo itself. Alone, honey will restore 9.4 hunger, 0 sanity, and 3 health much, which may not seem all that great. However, you must consider just how much of it you will have with even a decent honey farm set up. That and how long all of it will actually last as just in our inventories honey lasts 40 days. But toss that into an icebox and it doubles. There you go. Honey is also essential to our healing capabilities with honey poultice everyone. Made with but two honey and one papyrus, which is simply just refined reeds mind you. Honey poultice heals for 30 health a pop and can be used by every single survivor in the game as it's not a healing food of course. Course. Simply phenomenal stuff, and it's so easy to mass produce too, so get to it. But speaking of foodies, toss some small meat and three honey into a crock pot for some honey nuggets if you wish. 37.5 hunger, 5 sanity, and 20 health really ain't that bad. But when we're talking sweet meat, there is but one that reigns supreme. My, I mean honey ham, everyone. 75 whopping hunger, 5 sanity, 30 health, and a short burst of temperature increase to boot. Great stuff. And also not too terribly hard to make either. The meat's gonna be the problem here. But note, use big meats, not small. Ah, but the easiest of them all is likely taffy, folks. Simply throw in four honey for 25 hunger, 15 sanity, and minus three health. But a sticky snack turned into a sanity superfood. Perfect. Warly players can shoot for the moon with some fresh fruit crepes by tossing together two fruit, one honey, and one butter if they wish. 150 dang hunger, 15 sanity, and 60 health. Not bad, but it is kind of debatable whether that's worth it. However, it sure does look good. Ah yes, powder cake, the ultimate bait. Requiring corn, honey, and a twig at the very least, a powder cake is not really a dish to be eaten, everyone. Instead, it's meant to be used as mob bait for what feels like a bloody eternity. As no, your eyes do not deceive you. That is a legit spoilage timer of over 12,000 flippin' days. Enjoy. But here are two honorable mentions that don't exactly require honey, but honestly kinda do because who in their right mind would use honeycombs in a crockpot dish? But first up are pumpkin cookies, with their 37.5 hunger, 15 sanity, and 0 health a pop. And next comes ice cream, of course, with its 25 hunger, 50 sanity, 0 health, 
and a temperature decrease mechanic. But eat up. But two last honey notes here. Honey is needed to craft Warley's exclusive Honey Crystal Spice. And when this spice is then added to any crockpot dish of your choosing via a seasoning station, the one who eats it will double the rate at which they chop trees, mine boulders, and even hammer structures. It's cool stuff, and actually quite useful at times when combined with Woody perhaps, or just for the toadstool fights. And lastly, something that's not so useful, Wendy's Vigor Mortis. It is a hectoherbology potion that costs one honey and one that increases Abigail's movement speed by 75% for a full day. And yeah, that's about it. It's about as worthless as it sounds, unfortunately. However, there you have it, everyone. A super sticky deep dive into honey within Don't Starve Together. It was and is still a superfood among superfoods, in my opinion, given just how easy it can be attained. And even if your character can't eat the dang stuff, there are still plenty of uses for it. Take note and take advantage. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, go get sticky, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.